What's going on guys, Hunter here with AM Electronics, joined with Sam. Hey everyone. And today we're gonna go over syncing the ignition timing with your standalone ECU on your race engine. Syncing the ignition timing allows the ECU to know where the engine is at any given point. It lets it know where that TDC point is, so when you command 10 degrees, 15 degrees of timing, it hits at the right point. This is essential for any engine, but is especially important when you're using a universal trigger pattern. This includes things like RBs using the AEM cast disc, T1 triggers on your Hondas, or your universal trigger pattern on your custom application. In this case, on our small block Chevy, we have a cam and crank sensor located on the cam gear that outputs a cam and a crank signal to our ECU in a 12 crank, one cam pattern. So step one is gonna be grabbing a friend, grabbing a timing light. So Sam, jump right in here. Once we have our timing light and we're connected to the ECU, what do we wanna do? The first thing we wanna do with setting up the ignition sink is grab our timing light, hook up the pickup to our number one cylinder plug wire, and then go into the Infinity software and start the ignition sink setup wizard and lock the timing to a value of some sort. It doesn't really matter what that value is. Ideally, it's something that's marked on your crank and something that's easily visible. Before we start with the ignition sync process, we wanna make sure that we get sync state. What this means is the ECU is happy with the number of crank teeth it's seeing per cam tooth. And prior to getting sync state, your coils and injectors will not fire, so you won't be able to move on with this process until we get sync state. To test for this, we're gonna go ahead and disable the injectors to ensure that this engine will not fire, and we'll crank the engine over to make sure that sync state goes from zero to one. All right, guys, now that we have the injectors unplugged, ensuring that this engine will not fire, we're gonna go ahead and crank the engine with the ignition on and check our sync state channel to ensure that we're getting sync state. I got it. One trick I like to use when setting ignition timing when working on a, an engine or a setup where you can't really see the crank or you could see it, but you can only see like a small portion of it, it makes it kind of hard to see where your sink is at the moment if the crank pulley is not indexed all the way around it. What I like to do is take a Sharpie, a paint pan, anything, white out, whatever, and make additional marks on the crank pulley every 90 degrees and what I'll do is at TDC, I'll put one mark. 90 degrees from that, I'll put two marks. 90 degrees from that, I'll put three marks. So when you're looking at it with the timing light through a small little window, you know, given how the engine is installed in the chassis, if you see you know, two marks, you have an idea of where you are. Whereas if you didn't have that mark there, and you just see a blank pulley, you have no idea where you are. So you can take that into account when you make your adjustments for setting your sink. On the crank pulley, depending on your setup, there will be a number of different timing marks. It could be a factory timing mark at 15 degrees. On this timing pulley, we didn't have any factory marks, so we had to make our own. Using a paint pen and a degree wheel, we set our marks at 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40, so we'll have an indicator when we're syncing our ignition timing. The goal here will be to get that line and number to line up with our pointer on the block to match what's in the Infinity Tuner software. Next, let's get our timing light, clamp onto coil number one, and start making some adjustments. So we've got our timing light connected to the battery, and we're gonna go ahead and take the pickup clamp and clamp it to our number one plug wire. Be mindful that if your timing light has a clamp with an arrow that says plug, you wanna follow that direction. This isn't something that all timing guns have, but if yours has it, you wanna make sure that it's in the right direction. Another thing I'd like to bring up is in applications where you have a coil on plug, you don't have a wire. Some of you guys are like, how do I hook up a timing light to it? Simple trick, take an old wire, strip off one end of it, and make sure you have a little bit of lead there. Shove it into your coil on plug stick, hook that up to your harness, hook that up to your plug. Now you have something to clamp onto. So the next step in this process is to start the ignition sync wizard by opening up the Infinity Tuner software, and then going into wizards, setup wizards, and then finding the ignition sync wizard. In this screen, we'll select a timing value that we want to lock the ignition to. In this case, we're gonna lock it to zero, so we're gonna be looking for that zero timing mark on the crank with our timing light. Uh, make sure you hit the checkbox to lock it. Now that it's locked out, we're gonna go and hit the starter and check on the crank with our timing light to see where it's firing at. Nothing? Nope. We were just checking the timing on the engine for the first time with it not running, and our timing light wasn't firing. At this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that plug out and we're gonna open up the gap a little bit so that we get a better reading on our timing light. Another tip when syncing your ignition timing is to pull the plugs out of the engine. This reduces the overall compression, allows the engine to crank over faster and not deplete your battery during the ignition timing sync process. <laughs> 
So in our first attempt, we weren't able to see any marks on the crank pulley using a tugging light. This is probably due to the fact that our current sink is probably way off. So what we're gonna do is make some large adjustments within our Infinity software to try to push that timing to somewhere where we can actually see where we are and then go from there and make adjustments so we can get to our zero point. Um, we're gonna do so by hitting the, the advance or retard buttons within the ignition sync wizard. Just so you guys know, the small adjustment is a half degree increment and the large adjustments are a full five degree increment. So what we're gonna do is push this timing off by advance of timing about 30 degrees. Hopefully we'll be able to see some sort of mark. So what we're gonna do is click the advance large step six times to give us that 30 degree adjustment. So we made our adjustments to shift our timing advance by 30 degrees. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit the starter to crank the engine over again to see where we're at. So in our last test, I was actually able to see our mark that we made 90 degrees advanced from TDC. So what we'll need to do is retard our timing 90 degrees by clicking the large retard button 18 times. So now that we've made our adjustments, let's crank the engine over and check it with the timing light again to see where we're at. All right, so in this last test, I actually saw the light flash with the indicator somewhere between 10 and 20 degrees. I'm gonna guess around 15, so what we'll do is retard the timing another 15 degrees, which should be close enough to zero that we should be able to start the engine and then fine tune it from there. And we'll double check that one more time before firing the engine. Those are some big ones. So I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but it was firing at about five-ish degrees, so we'll retard another five degrees, and that should be enough to start the engine. So that's our five degree adjustment. We'll put that plug back in and start this engine and then do our fine adjustment from here. So while Hunter is putting in the spark plug, one thing I'd like to bring up is this is a four-stroke engine, meaning that you actually have two TDCs in the entire cycle. If you have your timing synced and you're like, I know I swear I have my timing sync, but the engine won't start, there's a potential that you might have your sync 360 degrees out and you're firing on your exhaust stroke. So what you need to do is shift your timing by a full 360 degrees and give that a shot. All right, so now we have our timing sync to what we think is TDC compression. We're gonna plug all our injectors back in and try firing this engine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and unlock the timing so that the, the ECU can time the engine wherever it needs to go to fire it. And then we'll hit the starter and see if it starts. So now the engine's running, we're gonna go ahead and lock the timing to a value that the engine will actually run at because some engines won't run at zero degrees. So we're gonna lock it at 20 degrees by changing this lock value to 20 and then hitting the check mark. So now that we've done that, we're gonna take our timing light and go back to the crank to make sure that we're still firing at 20 degrees and adjust if necessary. So after starting the engine and locking our timing to 20 degrees and double checking it, we found that our timing was still off by a couple degrees. So we went ahead and made some small adjustments in the Infinity Ignition Sync Wizard and now our timing is perfect. The final thing you want to ensure is that your timing stays consistent throughout the entire RPM range. Um, you want to go and test this by locking the timing at a value that the engine will run at, rev the engine through its RPM band, and confirm with the timing light that the timing does not drift forward or backwards. And if it does, you'll need to go ahead and adjust the pickup delay to account for that in the setup wizard. All right, guys, that's a wrap. This was a basic overview of how to sync your ignition timing. We know there's a lot that goes into standalone engine management systems, so leave us a comment below on what you want to see. As always, make sure you like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you're first in line. We'll see you next time.